Hello, welcome to this video. This video, live video performance. <laughs> this live exhibition is catered to Dos X Lager Especial. Since 1897. Well, not exactly. Not exactly. This is the anti war channel. I was talking to people about some anti-war concept Facebook over on Facebook. And I think they're understanding the proper way to look at it. Because they seem to perhaps be suggesting that it's okay to bomb civilians to achieve some greater good. And I was saying, oh. And I don't care who's justifying it, whether it's Germany or the Allies in 1944, 45. Anyway, there's a thick white head of foam. Now, looking at the, I don't know why I took my glass off. Looking at the, looking, 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 looking at the dosakis.com website, it says ingredients, water, barley, malted barley, cornstarch, and or syrup. So they're using either cornstarch or syrup or both. Hops and ascorbic acid and i think we all agree that it's good to have ascorbic acid in our beer accept that accept that 12 ounce serving has 131 calories now it's saying on the website 4.7 percent alcohol oh yeah but the can clearly says 4.2 so what is it heineken international Huatamak Moctezuma? you know what is it? <clears throat> you said, that's a mistake. Oh, man, look, I cannot say how many times I've looked on the website for these companies and get the wrong information. Oh, yeah, 10 IBUs, 10 international bitterness units. So that means it has enough hops to make it not too disgustingly sweet, but you can forget it as far as hop action is concerned, okay? I want to thank my friend David for bringing me this can. He said, I bought some beer and I figured I'd bring you this. I said, well, uh, look what I got in the fridge. He said, oh, ironic, because I had Dos Equis bottles in the fridge. It's also available on draft, which I've never had, but I'd love to have it. A golden Pilsner style beer. It's not a Pilsner, Pilsner style. Well, at 10 IBUs, you know, it's not a Pilsner. It's like Miller Lite calling itself a Pilsner. Yeah, right. Maybe at 33 IBU. There's not a lot in the way of aroma. It has a little lemony flavor and some pale, pale malt grain flavors. But look, if you're looking for a bold flavor, outstanding, bursting flavor, you're not going to get Dos Equis Lager Especial. The Ambar is barely up to that level. A nuanced blend of malt spices and earth tones. It's very nuanced. Now, see, I like what they're saying. That's a that's a fancy way of saying a dull blend of malt, spices, and earth tone. Like you might say, I find the flavor is not really there. And they'll say, well, it's nuanced. Flavorful yet light tasting and smooth. Um, <clears throat> flavorful. No bad flavors and no bad aromas. I think it would be better if they said marginally flavorful. Balanced composition and clean finish. It is balanced. It's a round beer, and it does have a it does have a clean finish. So I can't argue with that. But I would drink the Ambar, you know. But the reason I bought this is because I wanted the variety pack because I wanted to do a solo review of the uh, Mexican Pale Ale, which is funny because it's not really pale. Okay, the history. Let's go to this. So there you go. I hear the United States Postal Service coming down the street. All on a Mardi Gras day. How do you think the post office delivered on Mardi Gras day around here? I thought it was a holiday for them, but I guess it isn't. This goes to show you. I know they're not delivering downtown New Orleans. No way. We can even get around with parade routes and everything. So, um, <clears throat> This beer tastes fine, but it's not remarkable. Like, in other words, if you're going to drink something like this, why would you pay that extra money? Just get like the cheapest lager you can find within reason, within reason.
And around here, you don't have to worry because they really don't have any bad cheap ones. Some other states, you might run across beer 30. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Or you might run across Milwaukee's classic. That stuff coming from Melanie Brewing or City Brewing or um, Minhas can be questionable, highly questionable. However, I do notice that Minhas has improved their quality. I'm not saying they're making great beers now, but they, they're, they used to just be wretched. Now, they're all right. I guess they got so many complaints from mainly Trader Joe's, more than likely. <sighs> but I, I would just drink Keystone Ice. Why is that? Because I can get it for $7.99. A 30 pack. And to tell you the truth, Keystone Ice, it's an ale, but overall it's not that much different. It has a little banana flavor aroma and taste. It, you know, it it's better than this. It has more flavor, more body, more character, more boldness, more everything. And for $7.99, you get a lot more what? Beer. Exactly. Here's their history. William Haas, a German immigrant, arrives in Mexico and founds the Montezuma Brewery in Veracruz. Okay, and there's a nice photo of it. You can look on their website. There's a colorized photo. Nice looking brewery. Reminds me of Jack's Brewery in New Orleans. Jackson Brewery. 1897, he brews Siglo 20XX. 20 signal 20 the beer we know today is dos equis ambar he named the beer siglo 20 to usher in the upcoming century with the roman numeral xx signifying 20. the spanish word siglo meaning century oh siglo means century okay shows you what i know about spanish xx es cerveza moctezuma the moctezuma moctezuma brewery 1983 Dos Equis Lager Especial is imported to the U.S. First time we got, we only got the Ambar until then. And then they go on and showing um, Moctezuma changes direction from left to right. He became a right winger. See, he worked, first he was a socialist <laughs> and then he was a um, free market guy. During Moctezuma's reign, the Aztec Empire was at its peak. His head now faces right toward the ever-improving future to recognize forward progress. Oh, so they're saying head facing right makes progress. But Francisco Maduro and those guys in Venezuela changed the, the horse, whatever that symbol is, he had a horse to face or left. The left-hand course, the sinister course, left wing. Huh, maybe the Heineken family might need to talk to me. We need, hey, Heineken, got to talk off air, if you know what I mean. <laughs> got to talk about some things. Moctezuma Orizaba. That's a nice old bottle. It was clear. It wasn't green. Hmm. So they might have been making a lager especial, you know, like a, a clear, a yellowish lager all along, but it just wasn't sold to the U.S. of A. Uh, then they repackaged it. Okay, and then they show the packaging evolution over time. That's an interesting thing to look at, you see. 1897. Simple, clear bottle with Montezuma on it. Boy, that'd be worth some money today, huh? If you had one in good condition. Good morning, Ron, says John Neely. Good morning to you. Happy Mardi Gras. Most states, they got to go to work. You know, people have to go to work on Mardi Gras. I know people around here that go to work on Mardi Gras, but most of them like it. They don't want to go to the parades. So they say, uh, they don't say I have to work. They just say I'm working. You know what I'm saying? Because if they were off of work, they wouldn't go to parades anyway. So like my father told me this morning, I wouldn't go to the parades if you paid me to go. If you paid me money, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't. You, I would let you keep your money. I say, what? That's extreme. He's an extremist. You say he's a right wing extremist. No, he just doesn't like parades. He's an anti parade extremist. But he's seventy five years old. What do you expect? The French era, nineteen twenty to nineteen forty. French era. I don't understand that. They had the two. Uh, maybe it was a French style. It went to brown bottles. 
1940. Bayeris, what that means, I don't know, the Bayeris bottle. Brings up a big photo of the bottle. Dos equis Moctezuma Orizaba. Cervesaria XX. Okay, and there's Moctezuma with a big old fancy outfit. Looks like the Mardi Gras Indians, actually. If you look at that 1992 album by Dr. John, going back to New Orleans, it shows him going back to New Orleans. Shows him with the big uh, chief outfit on. Dos Aki, 1979 to 1983. Dos Equis Lager USA launch. Launch Dos Equis Lager. So what I'm seeing is that there could have been a four-year period where they slowly introduced it to America. Because they're showing Dos Equis Special Lager, imported Special Lager, and then Dos Equis Beer which is just the, the amber, ambar. And they had the foil cap like they don't have anymore. Huh. About 1980. I wasn't drinking beer in 1980. I was 12 years old. I'd probably be healthier now if I would have been drinking beer instead of soft drinks. My mother never really let us drink that. Okay, relaunch. I mean, she probably would have cared, preferred if we drank beer over like Coke and Pepsi. My parents weren't real strict about those kind of things. Relaunch USA, 1983-84. Ambar and the, and the Lager Special. So they had like a relaunch, like a um, re-emphasis on getting it popular. And it was slow going at first. Now, by the late 1990s, well, hey, hey, hey. 2004, 84 to 2004. It says Relaunch USA. Where they kept relaunching it? No, nah, that's just. Quark to Mo Montezuma era. Okay, the Heineken era, 2011. Okay, and then today's design, 2016 to today. The cans are different. They got the uh, horizontal label. Hey, look, I'm not going to get on here talking about how awesome Dos Equis is. Nobody in their right mind is going to do that. But... You could get on the internet and talk about it's enjoyable. You know, you enjoy drinking it. It's fine. It's watery and whatnot. But, you know, it's like I was thinking the other night, like J James P. Madonna. You might be watching James P. Madonna. He was saying, um, oh, you you could use uh, rooster sounds for dawn busters. Like you could have a sound of a rooster crowing. Then this man down the street used to have roosters, chickens he raised, and they would wake, wake me up every morning. Like, if you slept past four, you're going to get woke up because you could just hear, rah, 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 and they would go on. And, rah, rah, rah. They would just go on and on. But, um, <clears throat> and he gave me a link to one, and I said, I might use that. You know, I mean, it's nice, but I'm not a big sound effect person. And, uh, and then he was talking about, you could grow your channel like this. You could grow it like that, like this. And I said, uh, uh, okay. I wasn't too interested, you know? And so he said, well, and he got kind of aggravated and he said, you know, some people want to make their channel get big and grow it and become dynamite and big time videos and everything. He said, but on the other hand, some people are satisfied just to do it like a hobby a video beer review channel like a hobby and not accomplish much of anything. And I thought, ah, that's it. That's it. He's got it right. There's the problem. That's where we get into conflicts. Because he's telling me I have history and professional wrestling as a promoter and all of that in New Jersey and all that. I said, there's the problem. There's the, the point of contention. I am doing it as a hobby. <laughs> All right. I'm not trying to accomplish, accomplish much of anything. So I was thinking, you got it. It is a hobby and I have no point. I have no goal to accomplish anything. The only and I was thinking about that last night. I said the only real goal I ever had. Was simply 
to maybe bring in a different perspective on beer reviewing, like people, because I was reading reviews and watching videos where people were saying stuff like Budweiser is a zero out of 100. I'd rather drink, you know, some terrible thing they would mention. And I was like, come on, man. I understand the idea that Budweiser is just kind of ordinary and bland. It's not that great. It is good, though. I, so, but I can understand if a person says it's a C, I give it a C, it's just bland. Okay, fine. But to say that it's a zero out of 100 and it's like horse urine drained through a dirty sock and they'd rather be whipped with a, with a razor wire and roll down the hill on nails and stuff. I was like, come on there's a perspective issue on the internet. And so I said, I'll make a video channel to bring that kind of bring in a different idea. And then of, of course, political videos and all, I noticed that a lot of the, the preponderance, the preponderance of the people doing the video reviews had a very left-wing uh, socialist Marxist, even, even a Marxist Leninist ideology, really. So I thought, I don't know why that is. Sort of like with music and art, I don't know if they, they just either that people tend toward that thinking in that world, or that they've co-opted that world and they exclude people that don't share those socialist viewpoints. That's probably more like it because they're very militant about you have to accept international socialism and all of that. So I thought I could bring that in a little bit too. Because I know what that repressive tolerance is like. Repressive tolerance is we will tolerate any viewpoint that supports socialism. And what they go around saying all the time is you have to be tolerant. You must tolerate different ideas and entertain different ideas and be multicultural and all of that. And I thought and I always thought to myself, that's funny because they don't believe it. They're the least tolerant people on the planet you know, these hardcore type people. And it's very pervasive in the beer world. I said, they won't tolerate anything. They won't even think, uh, like you take any historical viewpoint or geographical thing, they won't ever think it through. You know, they just scream, holler, call people names. And they literally want people to be banned. And I say, that's a, that's a, that's a glaring example of why their ideology is faulty. See, because if you if you adhere to a winning philosophy, right, you're not going to try to have the other people banned or deplatformed or banished to the outer out uh, to the outer uh, netherworld. You know, you would say, "Yeah, sure, say what you want. I know I'm right. I can. Sh here's why. Let me tell you why. You know, right? But they say, uh, you know, oh, we have to get." And they use, you know, they're very clever. We have to stop hate speech. You say, oh, well, I don't believe in hate, you know. But what they mean, you see, what, what they say is not the same as what we say. See, if you say, like, what I mean is, like, if they say we ought to stop hate speech, you and I are thinking, yeah, really ugly speech and saying nasty things. But no, that's not what they mean. They mean any opinions that don't support socialism or communism or international socialism, progressivism. See what I'm saying? Like they would say ipso facto by default, that's hate speech because you don't support the world revolution. <laughs> so that's really what they believe. So um, I was trying to bring in a different perspective. I mean, I knew there would be problems, you know, there's gonna be attacks and whatnot. I was ready to battle, I didn't care. But, um, but if you have the winning idea, ideology, you don't have to ban the other people and try to shut them down because you can just say, you can engage me and I'll defeat you. You know, they generally won't do that. They generally will not engage you because uh, it's too much of a risk factor. Usually the left wing people, they won't engage in discussions unless it's a controlled environment, meaning they're controlling the environment. So if they don't have the ability to like cut you off or ban you and block you or whatever, and then start denouncing you without ability to respond, they're not gonna, they're not going to, 
They're not going to talk about it. Believe what I'm saying. I know this. I've been dealing with this for 40 years, okay? Like literally since 1980, when I was 12 years old, I kind of started looking into these kind of things. Of course, it took me a while to understand it. But uh, from a right-wing viewpoint, meaning me and other people who I associate with, but I, we will always say, come on, let's discuss it. Let's talk it freely. You you say your viewpoint, and then I'll say mine. Point, counterpoint, re, you know, statement, rebuttal, whatever. But they're not going to do that because um, they're never going to do that because they, they don't care about interaction and discussion and uh, a meeting of the minds or any of those things that they claim. They only care about promoting it. So there's no there's no way they're going to say let's have a an actual debate discussion, point, counterpoint, because people, you could figure about 90% of the people are going to go to my side. People generally gravitate toward the right wing. So because nationalism and all of these kind of things are natural, like that's in you, that's like, you know what I'm saying? Like a monotheism, nationalism, and all of these, those, those are natural things. People are naturally drawn toward that. So they, they're not going to entertain it. Not in an uncontrolled environment. That's fine because I know what they're I know what I'm dealing with. So I just operate on a periphery, you know, just like make little injections, interjections here and there. I have my own Facebook page and I'm careful, very careful because you want to be uh you want to be guarded Heard some. I heard someone else describe me. He said he's very guarded, and I thought to myself, he's he's right. Of course, you're going to be guarded when you're dealing with in a hostile environment, and people are looking for an occasion to to have you um, taken off the platform. So you, I try to tell people, other people off the air. I say this is not the time for explicit speech, so to speak. That day's coming, but it's not here yet. So you got to you have to use oblique an oblique approach. You say you mean a dog whistle, you mean coded speech. Well, whatever terminology you want to use is all apt. You know, so you wanna you wanna try to approach it in a very careful, measured way. Now when the day comes and we're running the show because the day's coming, I have no doubt. Then you can say, yeah, okay, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And I'll be right there with you, you know, standing on the balcony, whatever. So, but just, it's, this is not Madrid. This is not 1939. You know what I'm saying? So you got to just... Use discretion, let's say. It's not that you're weak, you're stupid. It's that you're in the arena. You That doesn't accomplish much if you say, I'm going to be a martyr. I'm going to be like the Christians in Rome, and they and I'm dying, and the lions are tearing me apart, and I went down fighting. That's good, and it's admirable, and I'm not denouncing that. But it doesn't. That's not the point. we got to promote the ideology. Okay, anti-war ideology freedom ideology, free enterprise ideology, nationalist ideology, whatever whatever terminology you want to use. So I think I think many of the people watching agree with that. Okay. Um, as far as Dawson, and even maybe what I was reading on the website, maybe even Heineken International is making an oblique or sending an oblique message. Although, I mean, from what I understand, from what I've understood from Heineken is they're very Freemasonic. Uh, Apparently, you fly over, if you would fly over the Heineken International Headquarters in the Netherlands, it would be a compass and a, a compass and, and um, square. Like the whole thing is designed to be a, a square and compass. So you would hardly think they would have a right wing think, a viewpoint. But uh, you never know. Um, it could be operating in the shadows to some extent, also. But tend to doubt that. 
attend to that. Anyway, um, be that as it may, uh, <clears throat> this beer is uh, fine. That's about all you can say about it. There's so many beers on the market that are just fine. Like you say, well, what do you think about Pabst Blue Ribbon, Old Milwaukee, Heineken, Corona, Extra? <laughs> Miller High Life. <laughs> And you say, oh, it's fine, it's fine, you know, it's fine. It's really the whole reason I started the channel, just to say stuff is fine. It's fine. If people hadn't been out there, and I believe this is true, if people had not been out there on the internet 10 years ago talking about certain beers being utter gutter trash, I probably would never would have made a channel. If they would have just said, uh... You know, I mean, like I'm looking around here in the room, Milwaukee's best. Yeah, it's all right. It's fine, I guess. I would have never cared, you know, like, but but when I when I saw the people saying it's a one out of a hundred, I said, now nah, I'm going on air because there's no way if a beer was a one out of a hundred, a one out of 100, 99% bad, you could not drink it. There's no way you could drink that. I don't think you could drink it if it was a 55 uh, I'm sorry. I don't think you could drink it if it was a 48 out of 100. 48% good and 52% bad. I mean, think about that. Thinking about think about drinking a beer that's 52% horrible. You probably get sick. I have gotten sick with beer. It was rancid. It's from Germany. It was years old. It was like 4.8%. It wasn't designed to age. You know, but they're talking about current fresh products that they're equating to that. And it's not it, that is not, in my opinion, is not a proper perspective. Okay, I watch a lot of videos, Hillbilly, Select, John Newman, John Anile. Um, I could go on and on. Jeremy Vincent does some videos sometimes uh, and go on and, on and on. And they give a proper perspective. They're not sitting there talking about Budweiser's world class, but they're not also talking about Oh, Rolling Rock, I wish somebody would shoot me with a gun and kill me before I drank Rolling Rock. No, they're not saying stuff like that. That's all. <laughs> that's that's all. End of the rant. But, you know, you get what I'm saying anyway. This is the anti-war channel. I can be a little more explicit on this channel. Anyway, all right. All right. So thank you, David, for bringing this. I like it. Not going to get excited about it. Not going to make a career out of drinking it, but uh, if I was to go to New Orleans today, let's say I go to New Orleans in a few minutes and go to the parade. Let's just say I do that. I'm not buying Dos Equis for $2 a can because that's what it's going to be. I mean, it's going to be $2 a can for water. You know, it has such a watery flavor. Oh, no, I'm not doing that. Other people will be drinking it. Barbecue. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. I don't care. I don't mind. They're having a good time. Wow, I don't think they pay too much. But I mean, I'll be more likely to go and pay a dollar, one dollar, you know, for a, a, a um, a can like this is Steel Reserve, six percent. It's a better beer. It has more flavor. Um, you know, I'll I'll drink that. I'll be more satisfied with it. But it, to each his own, it doesn't matter. I mean, that's where I got into conflicts with people in the beer world in the past and in the future, I'm sure. Because they make it like it matters, like this is their religion, you know. Oh, 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 it's we're on this great quest. I say, what are you on a quest to do? You drink a beer and talking about it. Oh, wow. I mean, I can't believe it. It's so important. I can't wait to buy your T-shirt. I don't think so. No, 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 sorry, can't go there. It's not my religion. Uh, I like drinking it, of course, but um, that's about as far as it goes. Just talked to my friend David on the phone before I came on. He was like, if you want to come by and do some beer reviews, I said, I don't know, man. I don't know if I'm going to feel like it. He said, I understand. He came over here yesterday. We did a whole run of reviews. We were just like reviewing, bam, 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 bam. And then uh, we did a whiskey, which was a mess. That beer, that whiskey was a mess. That was a mess, you know? 
we had to laugh. It was funny in a way. It was kind of fun. It was kind of fun to do it, you know, because it was like, wow, people buy this. We buy it because it's there and we want to look at it. You know what I'm saying? But they buy it to drink on a regular basis. We couldn't get over that. It was funny, though. Anyway, thanks for watching this uh, thing. And see you here later on the next channel, on the main, on the main channel soon enough, I'm sure.